Hey everyone, Ham here. In today's video, I thought I'd show you some performance tuning tips uh, that I found with an application called Process Lasso or Process Lasso if you're from the UK. What this application lets you do is control how applications or processes, should I say, are managed within the CPU and how to allocate them. Now, this can be quite useful if you're um, you're streaming, for example, and you want to make sure that. Uh, certain applications don't use up all the resources available such as OBS or Discord and interfere with the um, the gameplay. In my particular case, uh, I looked into using this application because I recently got a Intel 12900K uh, 12th gen CPU and with that comes um, this new introduction of what they call efficiency cores. So there is essentially eight uh, power cores which are hyper-threaded uh, and what that means is there's eight cores, but the operating system sees 16 virtual cores. And in addition to those 16 virtual cores, there's now these eight efficiency cores. And the purpose of these is really to handle background processing tasks and also not draw as much power from the um, power supply and keep your electricity bill when you're not really doing heavy processing tasks. The downside to this though is with Windows 10, which is what I'm currently using for VR, and I'm sticking with Windows 10 for the moment just because there's better support for VR and some of the applications uh, I'm sticking with it. Uh, with Windows 11 there has been some improvements to the Windows scheduler to handle um, processing and the handling of threads and make better use of the efficiency cores with the uh, Intel 12th gen. In this video I'm just going to give you a quick run through and show you how you can use it and even if you don't have a uh, Alder Lake CPU you still might find this video useful if you're uh, playing heavy CPU intensive games and you're also streaming at the same time. Um, I'm not going to show you any benchmarks, I'm just going to sh show you how you can quickly set it up and what some of the features are. So if, first thing you want to do is you need to go to bitsum.com, uh, I'll leave a link uh, in the description below and then you want to download um, the application, run the installer and we've got it up and running. It should look like this. So on the All Processes tab, let's go full screen. On the All Processes tab, it'll show you like everything that's currently running. As you can see, I've got Chrome open at the moment uh, and quite a bunch of standard Windows uh, SVC hosts. A lot of this you can ignore. Um, stuff, I think this is also a list of things that have been run on my computer today. But in terms of acti active processes, this is the one you want to focus on. And this is what you can see is actually using CPU utilization at the moment. So you can sort the list by any of the columns here. So if we sort by CPU, we can see at the top, actually, process lasso is the one that I'm, that's running now. And it's using, what's that, 0.2% of overall CPU utilization. So it's not using very much resources at all. Um, the other thing in, to take note of is in the top right corner is the uh, visualization of the course. So in this video, I'll be referring to this a fair bit. I have to zoom in in the video editing software. But um, you can see here all of the grade bars here are what are called parked cores. So these are actually all of the power cores on my current uh, Alder Lake CPU at the minute. And you can see the black uh, bars here are the efficiency cores that are in use. When the cores are activated, they will turn black and then the mount that actually being utilized will be filled in green. So if you install this and you've got a um, Intel 9700K, for example, you'll see eight physical, uh, eight black bars. Uh, I don't expect any of them will be parked. If you've got the Intel 9900K, which is eight cores, hyper-threaded, you'll see 16 bars. So in this case, we've got the eight physical cores, which are hyper-threaded, which is uh, 16. And then we've got the eight efficiency cores here. So I've got a total of 24 bars. Anyway, I'm just going to show you um, a couple of the properties that to get to get you going as quickly as possible and uh, show you how you can use it. So one of the things um, I recommend you turn on is Pro Balance. And this is Lasso's out of the box uh, optimized algorithm for essentially auto tuning a lot of the processes here and making sure everything's active. Uh, I don't know the exact ins and outs of this, but I'm just going to trust that that is um, a suitable algorithm to have. They give an example executable that you can run, which shows that a, a multi-threaded application that's got a normal priority 
Um, so when you create a thread in Windows, you can basically state the priority class that you want. Is it low priority? Is it high? Is it real time? And based on that, Windows is supposed to schedule um, those threads in a priority order to d deliver the highest ones first. However, the example app that they give shows how a, just a standard application using all the threads on normal priority can basically flatline your CPU. And this, this uh, application and this algorithm in particular is supposed to alleviate that. So anyway, you want Pro Balance enabled and the other thing you want is performance mode enabled. So I believe that tweaks the um, the power plan and alters um, how quickly or how the, um, the CPU cores are used. Now, uh, what I'll do first of all, now that I've got those ticked, I'm just going to load up Chrome. Uh, so at the moment, we can see there's a Chrome EXE here. And at the minute, you can actually, if I sort this by name, so it's not jumping around so much, it's still jumping around by CPU. You can right click and then you can specify um, the priority. You've got two options, you've got current. So that means for the moment, how do you want the priority of that process to be? And always is if you set a um, always priority and then reboot your computer, as long as a uh, process list is on, it should auto set the priority to what it was left on on always. However, generally speaking, the uh, documentation says you shouldn't really need to ch change this unless you know for certain that it makes a difference. So one of the um, uh, services I know for a fact from a um, previous video that I put together was the um, Oculus OVR service. There we go, OVR server. And then if we go to priority, always, it's already got high ticked. So that means um, whenever the Oculus headset's plugged in, it should have priority class always set to high. Now, that's the only application I've got set that way. Uh, in terms of documentation, it, it recommends that other applications be set to, um, well, left as they are. And if you want to demote them, you can do, but largely speaking, um, this pro, pro balanced enabled mode should take care of things. So that was priority class uh, settings. The thing I was going to show you next was um, how to set up affinity. So what you can do is if you go to CPU affinity, you can set which virtual CPUs you want that process to always be attached to. So at the moment it's got none, but if we go select CPU affinity, and then we go clear, we can go right. Um, I want it to Chrome to always use these um, last three efficiency cores. So click OK. Now, if we open up Chrome again, these last three cores should show activity if I start opening tabs and going to various um, web pages. So there you can see it's actually started to uh, show some utilization. Now, the other great thing that this um, application supports is as well as specific affinity um, associations, it's got CPU sets. And that is basically a softer version of affinity CPU selection. So if we go into here, you can actually see we've got some um, CPUs selected here. And I, I what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to pick uh, from CPU E16 to CPU uh, 24E. I want all of these to be within one set. If I click OK, what that means is any of these will now be used for Chrome. Uh, the additional chain, the, the additional difference between an affinity set is that if all of these get maxed out, um, which it won't with Chrome, but let's let's pretend that I just had an insane amount of um, pages open on Chrome rather than it suddenly stop it'll spill over and use uh, any additional cores that it needs to so that's a really handy feature for older lake users that are not on uh, windows 11 yet you can use affinity sets so anyway i've digressed a bit i'll leave that as is and then i'll show you another sort of use case that you may have so i'm going to fire up um discord next And as Discord's loading, I've seen it's actually picked uh, CPU 4 and 
core zero. So all of the um, the CPU cores start from zero and work the way up. So that's why it goes up to CPU 23 when I do in fact have 24 cores. So now that we've got Discord up and running, uh, if we actually click, click around, we might see some differences here. There you go. It seems to be on core four, we're seeing activity. Now what we can do is we look for Discord in the active processes. We press shift and you can select a group of the uh, processed threads or the active processes. And then you right click and what we'll do here is we'll just say we always want it to only use uh, a particular set of efficiency cores. So let's clear that down and we'll go with uh, the last three cores there at the end. So Discord should always only ever use those last three. And what that'll mean is if we stop, if we um, restart Discord now, and we load it up, we should see some activity on these last three cores. There we go. It started to jump. If we click around a bit in here, Oops, there isn't that much activity going on, but we can see it's no longer affecting core four. And then the other thing uh, streamers tend to use is uh, OBS, so let's open OBS up. And then we'll go CPU affinity always, and I'm gonna select which CPUs we want it to use. So we'll go clear and, and we'll use the first two efficiency cores here. So now if we go back to Discord, uh, sorry, back to OBS, we hit, hit record, I expect these two to uh, start showing activity and there we go. So I'm gonna leave that running and you can see what we've got set up here. We've got um, OBS on cores 16 and 17. We've got Discord using cores 21 to 23 and uh, Chrome, if we fire that up again. You can see it's using the uh, affinity uh, group or sorry, affinity set and that's using any of the efficiency cores from 16 to 23. And if it used more than that, which it shouldn't, it'll leak over onto the onto the uh, performance cores. Okay, so now we've got a uh, fairly typical streaming scenario. Uh, we've got the gameplay, we've got OBS running, and we've also got Discord, uh, which actually isn't doing that much, but if I change some of the channels, there we go, we can bring some activity. So the good thing with this is we can isolate um, Discord and OBS's activity and it shouldn't interfere with the other cores. So even if you don't have an older Lake processor, um, you've got one where all the cores are the same, you could use the same method to sort of ring fence certain cores off. Right, what we want to do now and the final step of a recommendation according to the documentation I can see from the uh, Lasso website is to set the uh, processing priority or performance tuning method for the game. So we just want to look out for ACC. So if we sort by usage, there we go. ACC is using about, yeah, it's the highest one at the moment, it's using uh, between 10 and 12% on the replay. Obviously if you're actually playing the game with AI, that'd be higher. So the recommendation is to use induced performance mode and also I've set up a, another uh, set and that's to always use all of the uh, performance cores. So what that means is it'll use all of the uh, larger cores here and if it runs out of space, it'll then spill over and start consuming the efficiency cores. So one other thing I didn't mention is also with um, applications you can also turn off hyper-threading and whether it's used or not. So if you right click and then go to affinity and always there's the option there to disable hyper-threading. So if you look here now, it's actually turned off every alternate core, which is, uh, must be the hyper-threaded core on the CPU. Now your mileage will vary as to whether this actually, um, 
makes a difference in games, positive or negative, uh, which can happen. Uh, as a general suggestion, I only recommend you really try this if you do have a lot of CPU cores, because if you're only on like a, a dual core or quad core processor, you're essentially halving the number of uh, virtual cores available for the game to run on. Um, I know there are some games that some FPS shooters that do benefit from turning um, high threading off. But this is quite a neat way of doing it um, in the software. The, the operating system itself still has access to high threading and you're not having to change something in the BIOS. Okay everyone, that's it from me. I hope you found the video useful. Don't forget if you did, hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to be kept up to date with more VR and sim racing content, hit that sub button.